How we doing guys? Dime Day She here and today we're going to be going over the Eric Ten Hag interview. I've watched the whole interview. I've listened to it. I've listened to another channel, hear their opinions about it just to get into the loop. I had I, I made sure I watched the interview before I made this video. So yeah, we're going to talk about the Eric Ten Hag interview, exclusive interview with Gary Neville. Let's crack into some of the talking points. Now, the first talking point, it was a little bit of babbling. Now, now he was talking about you can't compare different players like Kane and Hoyland, obviously. Harry Kane scoring a lot of goals. So that right there is whatever. Harry Kane's not at Man United. So it's, it's just whatever. I mean, that's just filler. So it is what it is just to get to, you know, to stretch the video out. But, um, yeah, so this is these are the main points, right? He's talking about Man United's game model. Now, obviously, they bought in Jason Wilcox. They're bringing in these guys. They're changing the structure. They've got Ineos in now. Uh, slowly but surely, the structure is changing at Man United. They got rid of two people the other day. I don't know their names off the top of my head. I should. Um, they said it in the video. I forgot. I don't, I don't know, but they got rid of two or three people the other day. Now they're bringing in people now. So the structure at Man United is changing. It's slowly but surely the Glazers are getting, well, they're not getting weaned out because they still own 75%. Well, well, they, they own the majority share because I said 75% before. And I think somebody said something about that. They still own the majority share of Man United. They're still the main sh um, shareholders or whatever. So um, there's a game model here. How do you think Alejandro Garnacho and Kobe Mainu are able to come up? So, I mean, he's talking about how Garnacho and Kobe Mainu came through the Manchester United Academy. Obviously, the Manchester United Academy is doing good right now. I'm pretty sure it's at the under-18s or the under-21s. They just won a trophy. So, they're playing really good. They're playing good football. But the first team is not playing good football. But the academy team is. It's ass backwards. It's ass backwards. All levels should be playing good. Every level should be playing good, especially the first team. So, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, you can see they won the FA Youth Cup. The academy teams were coming champions. Obviously, they won their respective Premier League title, the academy kids. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the under-18s. I could be wrong on that. Um, the players who are very young. Um, just a lot of waffling. Well, not a lot of waffling. Um, but yeah, it, it was what it was. And, and another big thing he was talking about was injuries. Now... I don't know what team in the world doesn't have injury issues because the way these structured the structured games are played every three days, every day, there's going to be bound to be calf strains. There's going to be cramps. There's going to be, you know, you know, stress stuff, stress fractures, stuff like that. You're playing every three days. That's not an excuse. Everybody's playing every three days. All these teams are playing every three days. The Premier League is pretty much, everybody's pretty much on the same consistent schedule unless they get knocked out of a tournament or something. But that's not an excuse. That's not an excuse. Injuries are not an excuse. You know, that's not an excuse. I I mean, that that's he was talking about injuries a lot in the interview. That's not an excuse. A lot of teams deal with injuries. Man City, I'm pretty sure, have issues. I, you know, they went into overtime with Real Madrid. They, you know, some of their players were having little injury problems. Injuries happen to every team. It's bound to happen. That's just how it is. We're, we're playing a competitive sport here. It doesn't matter what sport it is. Injuries are bound to happen. You're putting your body under tons of stress. That, that's not an excuse. That's not an excuse. Um, Ten Hag on Man United style of playing. Why hasn't it worked? Um, he said he's a realistic man. Last year when I came in, you can make adjustments, but at the end of the day, it's about winning games. From last year, we found a, a way to make a very successful team. Well, I don't know if it's been successful this season, but anyway. Um, this year, we wanted to make the next step. We brought in the goalkeeper. He's obviously talking about Onana. Um, they bought in Mason Mount and the goal scorer Hoyland. He's obviously talking about Hoyland. He wants to give Hoyland time. On one hand, we were quite confident we made the right choices, but all the injuries are coming. So, see, he's talking about injuries again. Obviously, not the same back four because, I mean, we have so many injuries, we have to put Casemiro at center back. So, he's basically saying we can't keep a consistent back four because there's a bunch of injuries. And we had Casemiro, Combo, Wala. And, and it's funny that Maguire's not injured. He, he always finds a way to get back into the first team. I don't wish injury on anybody, but this guy always finds a way. Always. It's crazy. But this isn't about that. But, yeah, I mean, he's talking about the changes in the back four. So he brings up injuries again. Injuries are not an excuse. It's not an excuse, in my opinion. Um, and then he asked him, why are there, why have there been so many injuries that's in the back and left back? Let's see here. We do research, but a lot also has to do with just bad luck. So now we're talking about bad luck now. Um... Well, I mean, it comes into that factor, and plus, they're playing games all the time. And, yeah, it depends on the training style as well. The manager runs the training session, so if he's doing these hard training sessions, all this stuff, um, all these things, that can play a factor as well. If, if it's very hard, intense training, and we have a game two days from now, you're doing a hard training session two days before, you got to give the body time to rest, at least 
72 hours. If you do 48, you're pushing it. You can, but you're pushing it. You're pushing it. And that's where injuries come into play because the mind, the body is not quite ready to come back yet. And you have to give your body time to rest. So, um, you know, we've now played 47 games and we've had 30 combinations in the back four. They weren't from the choices you make. They were forced choices because the players were injured. So that falls on the Glazers then and the higher ups. But see, in this interview, he had to kind of bite his tongue a little bit because he couldn't talk about the, what's that? Um, the sporting director. Who, I, I, it's the sporting director or the boxer. It's the sporting director. But he can't. He, he basically said he couldn't say really anything negative about the sporting director and stuff like that. So he kind of had to bite his tongue a little bit because, you know, He's the manager. He can't just say whatever. I mean, that that's just how it is. Um, because these guys are above him. So, yeah. But anyway, but the fans want to see a successful team, a team that's winning. We will always try to do. And it's a compliment to the team in every game they went for and had spirit. We made adjustments a little bit in the way we played. When you don't have a left-footed center back on the left side and the foot. Now, now we're talking about having left-footed, you know, left-footed players on the left side, left foot. And and basically, people in the video and, you know, the stuff I was with, people were like, well, womp, womp, get on with it. I mean, what are you talking about, having a left-footed player on the left side? That That's luxury. And that damn sure isn't happening with these Glazers here. So, that that's luxury. That's luxury. Um, but, yeah. You know, I'm seeing people saying this is a whole structure. Yeah, but, I mean, the Glazers still own the majority share, in my opinion. So, yeah. Um... Also, Gary Neville asked, has Ten Hag ever thought about playing more defensive? Obviously, he was talking about changing the formation, changing the style, maybe going to a 4-5-1, you know, a 4-4-2, changing it up. Because Ten Hag likes to play the 4-2-3-1. So, obviously, he's talking about the formation, changing it up. Um, and this is what he had to say here. We've thought about this, but one of my objectives here was to bring in a proactive way of play. So, he's basically talking about bringing in a consistent way of playing. The players will return and then adjust, go in a very defensive style, and if it doesn't fit to the players we already have, then you don't get the results. So then when the players are back, you have to return back to the proactive, and you have lost many times. At the same time, you see the proactive style. We've improved in our attacking game. We've scored more goals, and we're more consistent, um, and we're making improvements, but that's not enough. We know that. We know what the demands. We know the standards. We want to get back to wins, so we have to make the next step. We have to get into a winning position and then bring it over the line. Now, a lot of people are highlighting this. We have to get into a winning position and then bring it over the line. They're basically saying, so basically you want to score a goal and then sit deep for the rest of the game. And that's not the Manchester United way. The Man United way, when you go back to Sir Alex Ferguson, the Busby Babes, all these guys, it's super attacking, 4-4-2, super attacking, um, proactive football. That, that's why a lot of Man United fans are having the umph now because the style has changed over the past few years. Now we've become this more pragmatic team when in the past we were more of an attacking direct team. We had Giggs, Ronaldo, Scholes, Rooney, Beckham, all these guys, man, Cantonas. It, it, the list goes on and on and on. And now it's like we're playing this defensive proactive like Burnley ball. And and, and that's just not how the way Man United are meant to play. Um, also, um, Man United have also had over 600 shots on their goal this season. Um, they're most ever in the Premier League. 600 shots is crazy. That's a lot. So, Onana's been working uh, overtime. Um, he said he's seen the stats and it's clear. Last season, we had the consistent back four. Uh, here we go with this consistent back four again. Um, you should have at least um, two or three sets of back fours. I mean, well, I'll say two or three sets. I mean, there's only, what, 26 players in 26-man squad. So, But you should have another set of back four that you could go to. You can't just rely on one back four. You've got to have a second plan. And I think that's very, very important. But um, there are some reasons for why this happens, but I don't think it has anything to do with the way we want to play. Um, we've had the most clean sheets in the Premier League. Okay, so we had the most clean sheets in the Premier League. Uh, what does that mean? We're seventh place. I'm pretty sure at the time of record. Seventh, sixth, seventh place. I'm pretty sure we're still in seventh place. Um, Ten Hag on defending his players in the media and the FA Cup. And they put Sancho here. That's great. They put Sancho here. Sancho is literally... Um, a three ninety minute games away from winning the Champions League. Can you imagine if he wins the Champions League and comes back to Man United, the the trophy that we've been trying to win, and he comes back? Oh my goodness, that that is gonna be the ultimate egg on the face. That's egg on the face. If if he go if he went on loan to Borussia Dortmund, if you notice there isn't they're not talking about anything going on with Sancho. They're not talking about he's a he's a, you know he's a diva. He's destructive. They haven't said anything about Sancho since he's been to Dortmund. If anything, he's been doing well. I think he had the most take-ons in the Champions League game since Messi played Man United in 2008. 
That's a crazy stat. I think he had 12 take-ons in that game against PSG. That's crazy. They're not talking, they're not really saying anything about Sancho. He's he went to Borussia Dortmund and he's playing good now. So I it, it, it something's going on. It's very toxic, man. That's what it boils down to. Um everything is judged negative, but in our attacking game, we've improved over the course of the season. I I guess. Also, the young players need time to get to the best levels, but they have the potential that they show this season. It's, uh, it's a lot of babbling. Um, we need a consistent team. When we have that, we're confident. We have two opportunities. First of all, we have to defend our position in the league so that it's one focus point. The second, of course, obviously he's talking about defending the position in the league. Um, we're 14, 15 points off the top four, whatever. It, it's, it's far. So that's done. Um, so we're defending seventh place now. So we went from top four into Ollie, which wasn't good enough. Now we're defending seventh, sixth place. We're trying to get six, seventh place. So we've dropped. We've dropped, man. I have to, I have to hold my hands up and admit that we have dropped more. So we went from top four isn't good enough. Now it's settling for sixth and seventh. The standards are dropping at Man United. It's, it's sad, man. Uh, Manchester United didn't play so often tw um, in two years in the FA Cup Finals. So now he's talking about how Manchester United have got to back-to-back -back FA Cup Finals. Um, we lost the FA Cup last year. Hopefully we can redeem it this year because if we if we lose the FA Cup Final, this is all we got riding on the season right now. This is it. This FA Cup. This is it. The rest of these games are pretty much irrelevant because we're going to finish 7th place or 6th. So it, it really is irrelevant. Um Obviously, he's saying that, you know, um, um, first we have to defend our position in the league. So, we're defending seventh place. That's crazy. Anyway, well, here's another picture of Sancho with Ten Hag. And, oh, man. That's going to be crazy. Can, can you imagine? Can you imagine if Jaden Sancho wins the Champions League? That, oh, my God. With Dortmund, that is going to be the biggest thumb in the face of, 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 of recent time. That's going to be his whole. So, he leaves Man United. Goes on loan and wins the trophy we've been trying to win for years. Y'all let me know what y'all think down below in the comment section, man. That that would be unbelievable. Unbelievable. But, yeah, this has been me talking about this interview. Honestly, man, it's either the FA Cup or nothing. That's it. Put up or shut up. Let's get it. Speedball Diamond, you guys, I'm out.